Okay, everyone should be up, yep, Randy. Okay, good. Okay, I think we're all here. Hi, Brittany. Getting any sleep? I am, yeah. Last week, not so much. This week has been a lot better so far. So. I'm just writing down everybody who's attending. Wow, this is a great turnout, guys. Um, so it's 7.35. Do you want to start? I I just yeah. want to say I can't I can't stay because I'm I, I'm away with um with my in laws or my mother in law and I'm just I need to I thought it was seven and so I just want to say I'm sorry I can't stay and I want to thank um the three members who are leaving Randy Dan and Manny um, not Manny Rawlings um, because um they've they've served for a really long time and this is their terms are all up and they can all come back next year. <laughs> I know you Actually, all Nora, I was going to ask. Huh? Nora, I was going to ask you: Is there a um, the next meeting is after our? Um, yeah, the next meeting is. We could actually come. Wait a minute! I'm just wondering. When is the next meeting? It might be right before the organization. Meeting. It is. What's the date? It's like the first versus the eighth. It oh, then, for, then forget it. We're going to have like a party virtually at the next meeting. I looked at it. Okay. All right. So this isn't your last meeting. Good. Okay. Okay. That was premature. So uh, let's look at the agenda. Um. So can we approve the minutes? because we have two groups of minutes we missed. I have a question on the minutes from the last meeting. Sure. Um, on the part about the field fees, it says that the new fee will go into effect April 1st. I thought it was June 1st, because isn't that when the budget is? You're muted, Jason. June 1st, yeah, but, you have, but we don't bill until after June 1st anyway. So it's honestly the same thing, if you think about it, because you wouldn't get a, right. But yeah, no, June 1st they, is when the budget starts. You know, the minutes say or? it goes effect April 1st. It, I think it should say June 1st, but it says April. June In 1st the, is the first day that the new fee schedule would start. Yes, if that's correct. the question. In the yeah. minutes it says April 1st. So that has to be corrected. Oh, is that okay. not not true it does the boat ramp open june 1st not april 1st no 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 it's no when, these are the field fees the oh i'm the, sorry the increase in the fees should start june 1st but okay. it says april 1st okay so let's correct that if she's right and then also right. on those field fees um the the first line where it says 27 to 30 dollars uh -huh. it, it should say per hour not per person people the per person people don't pay it so you it was per hour in the second line but it says per person in the first line okay so that should be corrected and then i also noticed at the very beginning it was june minutes that we didn't improve not may we approved may's minutes in june so the the third sentence of the minutes should say june not may okay so that'll be june 2021 prc right. minutes Okay, so can I have a motion to oh, wait, 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 one more. Um, I have another I, too. It also, it, it, it wasn't included, and I feel like it should be included because I thought sure. we agreed. I thought we agreed that then we would increase the field fees to thirty three dollars starting twenty twenty three. It says that in thirty three dollars per hour the following year. It doesn't. Yeah, say. it does say that. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. okay, so if that's okay, I'll, I yep. will put that. That's fine. Okay, so I'll make the correction for the, so did, go ahead. Did the board, of, but the board of trustees adopted the correct 
numbers and dates, correct? No, this was never, my minutes have nothing to do with uh, uh, what Jason gave to the board. Okay. okay, okay. I just want to make sure we don't have to change anything. That's all. Okay. And the, uh, parking discussion. Yes. We talked about the boat ramp. It was actually, I believe, and I, I'd love if we could clarify this. The um, there was no employee at the ramp until after Memorial Day. I think that's what we discussed. That it was open from April first for almost two months, and there was nobody staffing it. Um, and um, we talked about the point that there was a lot of potentially missing revenue, especially with the new Rochelle ramp being closed last summer. Wait, are you in the October minutes? Yeah, in the parking discussion. So okay. It, it's, it says the boat ramp opened April 1st this year, and we had, a, we had an employee at the ramp starting at 6 p.m. on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, or 6 a.m. That, that wasn't really, we talked about that, but we also talked about the fact that there was no staff coverage uh, for April and most of May. I thought Jason said that somebody was there this year. No, Mo uh, the Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, okay, so, we, so how, how would that be amended then? And we did not, and, and we had an employee at the ramp starting Memorial Day. Okay. And then I would add in a phrase that the committee discussed that there was no staffing for nearly two months. Um, I think uh, Jason said he was going to look into. Right. Adding it sooner for next year. Right. So we just want to give you the ammunition, Jason, that you need to go back and get that staffed appropriately. We lost out on some revenue, I think, because the new Rochelle ramp was closed all last summer as well, or for a good part of it. Okay. So there was no staffing for two months, and Jason is going to look into that for next year. Yep. Okay. And during the week also, we should probably consider that as well. Although I remember one of the PEOs or one of the guys told me that's mostly people with launch season permits anyway. But so who knows how much revenue it is, but that's probably worth I have it. to interrupt. I just realized my total rudeness. I have to introduce Heather to the rec department and to the PRC. We're very happy to have you. She's a lifelong Mamaronek resident and uh, went to school here, then got married for a little while, but we're so thrilled to have her. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. So I'm sorry. So with that correction, are you, uh, is that okay, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we amplify the point a little bit. Okay. So can I have a motion to approve both minutes? Can sure. I Another question? I just, I just, I just, I have to go soon, but I, I just wanted to say, I believe that even though there isn't someone staffing the ramp, there is someone who tickets. So if you park in the area where you would need to park a trailer so that you can launch your boat, you're likely to get a parking ticket if you don't have the permit. Okay, well, they're two separate issues. One is- No, no, no they're related. I, they're they're related. Um, so I think that that's probably right. I'd love to know what our ticket revenue is from that. Yeah, I, I just know I, I know people who I know people haven't seen the sign and gotten tickets. So that's I mean, so I, I think that okay. there is ticket. So Carrie made a motion and who wants to second it? Come on, Heather. <laughs> you can't right. you at the meeting. <laughs> that's true. That might be true. She wasn't at the meeting. All right. Tina is a spoiler alert. Sure. <laughs> All right, Tina. All those in favor with the corrections? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, what's so, next up, Jason? I just wanna say welcome Heather and I'll see you all in December. Bye Nora. Okay, Jason. Hello, hi everyone. Um, so if you see in your agenda, the first item we have is allergy awareness playground signage. So we, uh, uh, the mayor actually received a communication from a resident whose uh, child has food allergies. And uh, I guess they go visit other playgrounds at Pensco Dam and elsewhere, and they saw these allergy awareness signs. Um, so she asked the mayor uh, if we can install them and the mayor 
wanted the Parks and Recreation Commission to uh, to discuss it. So I, I don't know, in your packet, there's a picture of what one of those signs looks like. Um, and then the rest of it's just email communication between uh, me and Maytel, who was the resident that wanted us to discuss it. I think it makes sense and it's simple enough. I mean, the sign had everything that you need to, to I guess, just logistically seeing where you need to put them. I mean, from a parent, that has a child with severe anaphylactic food allergies. I love this idea. I think it's great. I think it should have been done a long time ago. Anybody else? Yeah, I think it sounds great. I definitely have been at the parks where kids have all kinds of snacks and, um, you know, the kids old enough to know what their allergies are, like have to ask, like, does this have tree nuts in it? And so it's just, um, you know, for the kids that aren't old enough to know or, you know, realize, or you don't know what other families' kids have. Um, I think it's definitely great to raise the awareness for that. You guys want to vote on this? Okay, all those in favor? Of, of putting up this signage and instructing Jason to. Okay, so that seems to be unanimous. Are you okay with Jason doing this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I, Can we do I it in-house? Um, I would def uh, defer to Mr. Jeff on on that. I think Pablo can make something like that, but Jeff will tell you no more from his What do you experience. think, Jeff? Jeff, on. Do you guys hear me? Now we can. Sorry, I missed the question. I'm having some technical difficulties over here. Oh, so you know the we we're talking about the playground allergy awareness sign. Uh, you saw the picture, right? Do you think Pablo can make something like that, or we got to outsource it? I believe Pablo can make something like that in house. Okay, that's good, because we're going to need you know a bunch of them. Yeah, least. I believe we can put it in house. All right, that's good. Save some money. What's next, Jason? So the next item is Turkey Trot. Uh, just wanted to give everyone an update on Turkey Trot. So it's been out for you know about a month or so. We've had it out. We have 500 people registered, so that's really great. I think it breaks down to... Uh, 350 or so adults and then the kids are would be the remaining balance so the numbers are great i hope to get to a thousand registered by november 21st so that's good we usually get like 200 people register on race day um so if the number's at like 800 or so by the time registration ends i'll i'll be pretty happy which i think we're going to get there um so it's a pretty popular event um Staff has been working hard to plan and, and get it together. Um, I provided you with, you know, the flyer and the course map and uh, all that stuff, but it's a long held tradition. So I'm sure many of you who've lived here a while know about, about Turkey Trot, but it is uh, one of my favorite events of the year. So I'm looking forward to it. Any questions? Jason, how many people do you normally get? Um, so it, it ranges, I in the six, this will be my, fifth because we didn't have it uh i've never gotten under like 950 it's always been over 950 people the most i got and i think 2018 we got like 1350 people which was a lot um that but a thousand lot. yeah i think a thousand would be a good number for us for a small community i mean that's you know great compared to like other small races where they get maybe 150 people so you know it's a, it's a cool event have we ordered enough t-shirts we do. We ordered 1,300 t-shirts, which I think would be uh, more than enough. And we have, you know, the custom medals for the winners again and the finisher medals and um, working on a few different small-ish sponsorships. It's been a little difficult this year. Uh, I was going to ask you if you had any supply chain issues. Um, well, we've had supply chain issues, but mostly with like Jeff's purchasing, uh, like 
playground parts and things like that. Uh, this year, Turkey Trot, I started Oregon in August and things are coming now. So we started early. Um, but if I started late, yeah, we wouldn't have gotten anything. Same with like Christmas where we ordered, like we have all of our Christmas stuff uh, for the programs already like in-house already because we ordered it in August. Uh, so, cause things are, are taking quite a bit of time to get some things like playground parts are months and months and months and months. So, yeah. Um, any questions about Turkey Trot? I hope you guys join us. Well, you know, I know I usually see quite a few there. Dan usually comes and yeah, it's a good, it's a good event. Do you need, do you need help or you have enough staff? Well, I have quite a few volunteers. I feel like more than ever. I don't know. There's a lot of from the school district, uh, Westchester Emergency Communications Association. I think both school districts have reached out. We got mostly the kids that do it for volunteer uh, hours, and then we'll write them letters. Uh, Students for Senegal, which is the program in Maranek High School, it's like a, a club. They help out a lot and they raise money for their initiative through Turkey Trot, which is cool. Um, so yeah, we do get a lot of community support. I think uh, the Maranek Avenue School reached out and uh, we provided them with a little discount coupon because they were registering a lot of kids. So um, I know we have a big contingent of MAS Tiger group coming. So that's cool. Um, it's really a cool community event. It's really local. We do get more than half are, are, are residents of the area, but we, but, but we do get some outsiders, but it's a really cool local event. And I, I think people show their support. Okay, great. Um, Jeff, I'm very curious what you have to say about Bark's update uh, post all the flooding. Well, we have some, uh, we're waiting on some parts. Um, as Jason said, uh, these aren't as easy to get as other things, but uh, we had some uh, extensive damage in Warren Avenue Park. We actually had to call in a uh, water remediation company to clean that park and disinfect it. Uh, we lost a couple pieces of equipment up there. Um, everything's been ordered. Um, some stuff sitting in the middle of the California Sea and some of the stuff is stuck on a truck somewhere across country. So once uh, all that gets in, we'll, uh, we'll start replacing all that. Uh, other than that, all the parks are open. Um, everything's uh, working out fine. I actually have a um, playground, certified mm -hmm. playground inspector um, inspecting a couple of the parks around town just to make sure that everything's up to code and everything's uh, properly in working condition. And that's about it. Is the I know play I missed the last meeting, but just wanted to say thank you so much to all your hard work after Ida. Um, I sent an email, but like I was just blown away. I know you'd planned to keep the parks closed for a month and was really impressed that it, you got it, most things back open within a week. So just thank you so much. I know you were probably working crazy, crazy hours and super stressed. So just really appreciate it from everyone in the community. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I see uh, I see uh, Jefferson Avenue once that open, they they that place has really been a hot spot recently, which I'm glad it's finally yeah, made there full circle to being used again. <laughs> Jefferson Avenue is priority number one for me and Jeff in terms of getting something new equipment in there. It's really so just know that we're working on it. It's not that easy. It's just like everything, every capital project is a struggle, but uh, we're working on it. So it's important to us that we get that park a little bit better. So Thank you. Um, speaking of parks, um, Jeff, do you have um, any idea when we're going to be able to meet for the dog park? I had emailed and didn't hear back from anyone about when we can get together because um, I know the dog committee really wants to start moving forward again. It's just, you know, it's been stagnant. So the last email that I saw, it was between the dog committee members asking each other when they could meet and it kind of died down then. I haven't seen an email since being spoke of uh, from the dog committee. So unless I'm missing something. We were looking for you and or Jerry 
to get back to us as to when you guys could meet so we could at the site because oh, that's what okay. we were told was the next step that we have to meet with you at the site to just map out the area so that we can start moving forward and so that's kind of where we left it that's why when i said we didn't hear back from anybody it was we didn't hear back from anybody about when we could meet yeah okay. i apologize i, I, I would also we were... say that it looks like nora has something on the bot work session for november from the email that i'm reading about the dog park something okay. about the how we the site selection process um that's what it seems to me um and she said that I'm going to compile what is needed, including documentation, committee reviewed, and analysis of alternatives, classification, and preparation for the resolution. I guess that's a resolution so that we can confirm the location and go forward. That's what it seems. And she sent that, Nora sent that to the subcommittee in reply to your email, which was requesting for us to meet. But then after that, I didn't, that was in October. Right. What, what was the date, Jason, for that? I don't, uh, I didn't see October, that email. October 18th. Yeah. Um, and that was the day after Kerry sent the email that she just described to everyone. No, but what's the date that Nora has on the November calendar? Uh, it says November 8th uh, in parentheses, November 8th. So, okay. uh, I mean, I can't, Nora's not here, but I'm just going off what I read in her email. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll follow up. You guys should meet with Jeff before then. Well, no, it sounds like we have to wait until after November 8th, so the board can approve the location. Good luck with that. That's what you're saying, Jason, then yes, that, that I- Good luck um, with them approving it. I think- I, I am trying to decipher the email that she sent, but that's what it seems like, the discussion of the secret process for the work session in November, November 8th, to allow time for staff to provide backup, which she said she was gonna compile, blah, 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 about, and this all to do with the location, how, uh, the committee came up with that location. From my I understanding, just, I just wouldn't wait for their work session to have so that you don't know what's going into what she's saying to the other trustees. I'd be more proactive personally. And there's a, uh, uh, there's a high chance that they won't even get to it. They'll put it on, but it's they're so backed up that they might not even get to it that day that they're supposed to get to it, too. So. Carrie, maybe we can reply back to Dan and Jerry. I think they're in the email that Nora sent and see what the deal is. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, that's what we'll follow up. Good idea. Okay. Um, Randy, can I just make a quick comment on like holiday stuff? So we're going to do, sure. uh, um, um, we, we already have out a holiday ornament decorating program similar to what we did last year. So we get these ornaments and if you register we bring the ornament to your home the kids decorate it with paint and all this stuff and then we hang them on the tree so it gives a little the, the holiday tree uh the tree lighting's going to be december 11th and that will be in the normal location and then we're going to do that holiday light experience like we did last year which is really cool and try to expand on it a little bit um so we're going to have some cool holiday stuff uh coming up as well Okay. Um, Jeff, is there anything else you want to update us on that um, that was left from our last meeting in terms of things that you've ordered or um, any upcoming projects that you want us to know about? Now we're doing a uh, in-house tree trimming all throughout the harbor. Uh, as of right now, we probably trimmed uh, two dump trucks worth of branches from new trees, old trees, uh, dead trees. We took down. We took. We had to take some of the cherry trees down in the harbor uh, in preparation for hopefully new cherry trees and other species to be planted in the harbor. Um. We've completed two other swing benches on the West Basin side of the harbor near the Marine Police Unit building. Uh, we have a third ready to go. We're just waiting on uh, some simple angle brackets to finish that one, but we already have the bench in. Um, since the last time we spoke, we've had three donation benches put down at Harbor Island Park. 
which then in turn, uh, there were benches already in that spot. They just weren't dedicated. So what we ended up doing was we ended up taking the non-dedicated benches and putting them in Tompkins Avenue Park to try and update that park a little bit. Um, and that's about it. We are working, myself and Jeff are working on um, two capital projects that we hope the board would fund. One is the Lanza Field Lights and the other is the red and blue room floors in the pavilion, uh, which are tired and old. So that will bring information to you as we get it. So hopefully in the near future, specifically the Lanza Field Lights, because that's a project we would like to have done uh, sooner than later, because we're just really wasting electricity uh, dollars. I, I know you and I talked about this separately offline, but um, did you, are you pursuing like energy saving grants and that kind of thing? I, I yeah, two, I have two options. So I, one option is already in hand, which is bonding it and buying it outright from Moscow. The other option is a New York Power Authority um, grant, uh, partial grant, partial built into your bill. So but they are slow and that's what's kind of holding up the process right now is getting that second option because they have their in-house electrical engineer that figures out the best way and uh, they're not the fastest organization. But yes, uh, that is what we're trying to do. Whether uh, we get, whether it's feasible or not, we'll see. Uh, but that's pretty much what I'm waiting on. Otherwise it would have been presented already. Okay. Um, what else is on our agenda, guys? That's it I had for um, this meeting. I just Case wanted to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, going back to the Jefferson Avenue Park. Um, so I don't know where we're at as far as getting that approved um, for, for the Capitol, but um, two things. So in like, as you're saying that it's going to take a long time to get playground equipment in, I, I just don't know what that process is of like, do we have to wait for the approval before we can even start like thinking about that? So all of that is going to get pushed back. And then um, the other, oh, go ahead. <laughs> so we can, we can always think about it. I mean, me and Jeff think about things all the time. Um, but generally, we try to get some sort of verbal commitment before we, because it's a long process to get quotes and quotes are good for a finite amount of time, 30, 60, 90 days, some, it just all depends. And um, so, and then state contract pricing and bids and, you know, usually these things, uh, if we don't feel like it's a lot of work. So we want to make sure that we have support before we submit, like a Jefferson might be 300,000 plus dollar project we were when we did the the, the the capital budget on it so um but yeah we can always think about ideas and we think about ideas for that park all the time yeah uh, so internally. one thing i yeah one thing i had been thinking about lately is um getting lights especially since you um put in the basketball hoop there if you could get lights for the evening because i feel like columbus park has lights on their basketball court and it'd be really nice to have like to be able to use that park into the fall and winter. Um, yeah. But right now it's like pitch black. You get a little bit of light coming from the fire department across the street. But um, I think you'd be able to get a lot more use out of the park. I don't know what, what time you guys lock it up in the evening or does it get locked? It doesn't get locked. Okay. Um, okay. But, the, but they're all technically supposed to close at dusk. Okay. I mean, according to the code. Um, right. But obviously, like Columbus Park, there's lights on the basketball no. court. So that yeah. conflicts, right? But I, I don't, the code conflicts a lot. With yeah. Things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a consideration. I, I mean, I would get Jeff's thoughts too, but I think that's something that we would have to bring to the board because there is neighbors and anytime you put lights up, there people get upset. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And Jason have, have met about Jefferson numerous times and we have everything from new curbs, new sidewalks, new playground equipment. I mean, we're going fencing to nuts, everything. Fencing, so, 
um, lights lights can be brought to the table, but like Jason said, it 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 depends if it's feasible. So we we can always put ambient lighting like that, mm -hmm. so safety thing. So we could put that, but when it comes to play lighting, like Columbus has the other yeah, board's going to have to probably. Uh, along with the capital money, but I think that might be a separate item that they would have to just consider just to make sure that the public can. Right, and and and, and then you need to find a power source and meter it, and so it's it's all we could talk about it, but it all depends on whether it's feasible or not. Yeah, it's not do. simple. Well, it also seems like if the parks are supposed to close at dusk, which is when it gets dark, there'd be no need for lights if people aren't supposed to be in the parks after dark. So you guys have to like, the, you know, the village has to figure out what way they're going. Can people be in the park at night if there's lights or so can't they be in the park at night if there's lights? You know what I mean? Technic technically, some parks do say park closes at 10. Some parks say park right. closes at dusk. Right. So if a park closes at dusk, there'd be no need for lights. But if they want to put lights in so people can play basketball, then they would have to change the hours of the park just so that everything, like Jason said, there's a lot of conflicting information. Things should just be consistent across the board as far as if you can be in the park after dark or not, then the signage should indicate that. And then, yes, there should be lights so people could play basketball in the evening. But again, that's something the village would have to kind of figure out what they want to allow. I yeah. think Jefferson Park is more along the lines of uh, fall and early winter where, uh, you know, it's 4.30 and 5 o'clock and it's starting to get dark and you have the little children, you know, who, who could stay out a little bit longer. I don't think we're talking about as far as like people playing basketball like they do at Columbus Park because over there they, they actually run games and, and all that. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not something a to think court. about. And, yeah. And we'll uh, we'll have to get all on the same page with the rules, and yeah. then go from there. But I think we're all in favor of, you know, Jefferson Park is really run down, and it could, and especially I think Brittany brought up about little kids. So just it would be great to have. And I just res recently was there, and there's a lot of people hanging out there. They just don't have as much to play with. Yeah, um, the kid. The sad part is, is the the infant playground is is literally two steps and one little slide. So that's yeah, it's you know, it doesn't it doesn't leave much to the imagination. It's, that that you park, know that park has been the same since I was a kid. It stinks when you look when you go by a park and I mean, listen, people bring balls and bats and stuff, but it stinks when you have to go to a park and you have to see like people bring like hula hoops and this and that because see, you know what I mean because. Our playground equipment sucks. You know what I mean? Well, the swings are there, but still. So it needs oh, to. Oh, to that, to the swing point, it looks like somebody has caught this a few times, but the um, older kids swing that was just added recently, um, the it's come loose like a few times. So I don't know if you guys have been fixing it or who's been fixing it, but it's um, it seems to be fixed like within 24 or 48 hours from like when the chain like comes off loose from the top but um, it was loose again today. And like one of the dads was just trying to like, Jimmy, like Jeff, take we gotta put, We got to put those tamper proof things in there, right? We fix it, I don't know, three, four times a week. Uh, we, we ordered the different safety bolts for it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm waiting for them to come in. So we, okay. we, it's something we kind of keep our eye on when we do the uh, garbage in the park every day. Yeah, uh, they know they know to check it and tighten it up uh, until we get those other bolts in. Uh, we just got to stay on top of it every day so no one gets hurt. Gotcha. OK, cool. So what so what is the time? And I apologize if I missed this last week. So super sorry if I'm repeating anything for anybody. But what is the timeline then for getting these things approved? For um, I'm approved right now, but. I mean, sorry, not the swing, but like the full renovation of Jefferson Avenue Park. So like approved right now. <laughs> um, that's a good question. So I don't want to think how the board is going to do. I know they have a lot of priorities. Um, I think it's probably realistically something that will be done in 
2022 end of year or early 2023. Um, I think the board would probably move on the lands of field lights and then probably Jefferson would happen after that, I would think. Um, but yeah, Jeff, what do you think? 2022 to early 2023 is when I think, but. I'm going to go 23, 24, actually, because by the time the board approves, by the time we get um, drawing design. And, and all that, yes, design, and we actually get the contractors and the equipment in, uh, it's a pretty long process, especially nowadays with all the shipping problems that we're running into every day. Um, I see that being a big issue for us because a lot of the stuff is uh, manufactured overseas and shipped in. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go early 23, even late 23, hopefully that the board approves it. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. So, um, Tina? Is there any update on the tennis? Um, Cause that's another subcommittee that I'm on that has not met in a long, long time. I have not heard a thing since our <laughs> last, you know, whenever I came last, I yeah. do know and that the- That was, it was so long ago. I do know that the board, I'm trying to think, I believe it was the last BOT meeting or the one before that, they did approve some sort of extension with them. Uh, I want to say uh, until 2023 or 2024 with sports. I think time. so too. Um, but I, I, that's all I know. I haven't heard. Meeting. Yeah, I haven't heard much other than that. But I, that's what I heard that they did approve a, an extension. Okay. But I don't know anything else about year round in terms of where that committee is at. All right. Thank you. So, uh, oh, sorry. Um, we talked about having the harbor master come to one of our meetings. Who, who was like coordinating that? And any chance it'll happen in December? We can certainly ask, what, Jeff, do you want to touch base with LaRusso tomorrow and see if he can come to the December meeting? Yeah, I, uh, I touched base with him uh, shortly after our last meeting. Um, unfortunately, uh, he had some uh, family things to deal with this month with uh, his father. So um, December shouldn't be a problem. So is our next meeting December 1st? It's yeah. a Wednesday? The first Wednesday in December. Yep, the first. Okay. Jeff, could you see if that works for him? Yeah. Well, uh, no, tomorrow and I'll send an uh, email out. This way Thank he's uh, put, on the, put on the invite. Thanks for bringing that up, Kristen. And did you guys want him, just so he, we know, did you want him to specifically talk about like something... Should he, what should he prepare for, uh, for, you, for, for you all? Because I think, you know... We're talking about all the, the kayak rack Kayaking? storage and the okay. paddleboard, possible paddleboard storage. Okay. okay. I know this is one of Carlos, you know, he, one of his hot items. <laughs> okay, we'll so get him. I think there are paddleboard. Are we talking about more paddleboards? Because they added some this year for the first time, right? We did, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he could talk about you about the docks forever, so... Any questions, I'm sure I'll be able to answer them. I just think it'd be nice for the rec board to know what, you know, those that are water people know more than those that are not water people. I agree. Okay, so um, if it, I, I'm welcome, any other, uh, these are all great things people are bringing up that have been uh, kind of sidelined so I'm just happy everyone's collective memory is good um anyone else who has anything that they want to add up Cindy do you have anything do you have anything to add or Hi. a question to ask um no I just want to say thank you um to Jason for uh letting us have that concert last week which was amazing and we've raised I think at the park over a thousand dollars um 
but I think I heard the grapevine that there's two more grants coming in. So it's kind of, it's kind of amazing. So thank you very much. Well, thank awesome. you for the, for those who attended. Thank you. And thank you for doing it. You're welcome. Jason, how was the um, like the kayak and paddle boarding um, courses and like, did we see a lot of activity or um, a lot of people interested in that? Yeah, they were popular. Again, those are the kayaking and the paddleboard classes are, are, are strong. We rarely cancel due to low attendance. The nat we did naturalist tours this year too with the Marine Center. Those were really popular. Um, and then like the kids camps that we do in the summer, those are always sell out. Um, we also do um, a joint program with the town. So we'll, we'll, we'll do some town kids with village kids. Um, and that's popular. Kayaking strong. Um, it's one of the, uh, we're very lucky to have the water because uh, not many municipal rec departments can, can do what we can do. So it's pretty awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah, I encourage everyone to get on a, on a kayak at least once. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Can I ask a question? Do we have joint activities with the town of Mamaroneck uh, Recreation Department? Is that something that happens frequently or infrequently? Because somebody asked me, as our tri-municipalities, how much of our recreation activities exist together? Or, or done together. Do you have any sense of that? Very, very, kayaking would probably be the only thing that I can think of. Because I, I thought there weren't many either. So I just- No, it's, uh, it's kind of been that way since I've been here. I think they do their own thing. The town does their thing and the village does their thing. And why we that's also have We also have uh, very different resources. You know, they have a swimming pool and ice rink. We have a lot of grass space and a beach and a waterfront. So it's two, you know what I mean? It's totally two different exactly. facilities too, so. So as a, a residents of many of the individuals on this board are in the town of Rye, correct me if I'm right or wrong, I think we're treated as non-residents in town of Amaranek recreational uh, activities. I think they have their own fee for- They like, have a Rhineck rate. Yeah, town Rhineck of rate. gives Rhineck residents a different rate from non-residents but we're not residents so like Marine if you wanted to join the pool so it's good. more than their residents but not as much as non-residents right thank you we on the other hand unless you live in the village of Amerinek whether Rhineck or not you know you're a resident whereas like town of Amerinek you live in the town you're not a resident here so it's pretty you either pay taxes to the village or you don't so yeah it's pretty much how it works for us okay thank you for uh, Carrie, straightening that out, I wasn't quite clear. Probably I haven't had little kids in a decade or more. Um, okay, so uh, would somebody like to make a motion? We'll be back December 1st. It'll be a lot colder. Uh, would someone like to make a, Carrie, you wanna make a motion? Thank you. Who wants to make a second? Heather, you can now be, a, um, Heather's gonna make the second one because she is here. And, uh, I just want to, again, uh, Heather, if you want to call me, you know, I did this with Brittany when she was new to the board. We just took a walk around the park one day and to uh, show you where, you know, the, the lay of the land, it's kind of, I mean, if you want to do that, I'll make myself available for an hour or so. So, sure. okay. Show me your um, phone number or email. I don't think okay, I so have any phone. stuff. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, I'll send you my uh, I'll, I'll I'll just give you my phone number right now. It's uh, okay. 914 Yep. Six six five six nine zero seven five. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right. So all those uh, in favor of adjourning the meetings, say aye. 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 Okay. Fast meeting. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.